Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and today we're back with a uh, product that really annoys me kind of for the wrong reasons. And these are these little low cost raid cards that you get on Amazon, eBay, AliExpress and so on and so forth. You've probably seen them around. Uh, they're not really the latest thing to hit the YouTubes, but they really annoy me because people kind of get the wrong idea about what these things can do. Now, if you take a look at them, they generally offer anywhere from two to, in some cases, up to eight little SATA ports on a single card. They either have a PCI or PCI Express 1X kind of interface. They're low cost anywhere from, I've seen them down to like $10 up to 50, depending on the SKU and what kind of onboard controller you actually get. And in a lot of cases, people see them and they go, huh, four SATA ports. I'm going to get four low cost SSDs, put them in RAID 0 because all of them support RAID 0. And boom, some quick napkin math says that I should be able to get 1.2 gigabytes per second speed out of one of these cards. Now, the thing that really annoys me with these little things is the fact that people make that assumption without realizing this part of the card. And that is the interface that it actually runs. Unfortunately, that's just not the case. Whether it's PCI like this one or PCI Express 1X, we're limited to about 200 megabytes per second or in the theoretical uh, technical specifications, it's 250 megabytes per second uh, bi-directional. So read and write 250 megabytes per second in theory. And in the real world, that translates mostly closer to about 200 uh, megabytes per second read and write on these particular cards. So the thing that sort of makes me the most kind of annoyed about all this is the fact that the people are kind of using them from the wrong reasons. So, okay then, you're kind of annoyed about this, but obviously they exist for a reason and there is actually a really good reason for these things to actually exist. And that is the large storage market for people on a budget. Now, as we just noticed here, and if we throw up some benchmarks from this video right here, where I went in your head and used the faster 4X version, we see that even with dual 4X cards, we're only able to deliver 1.6 gigabytes per second across 10 drives, whereas the napkin math says that we should be delivering it over 5 gigabytes per second, and these are even with the faster ones. So the slower 1X versions are not going to be great right there. But what they're great for is hard drives and lots of hard drives. Now, as we mentioned, the PCI Express standard uh, that the PCI Express versions use is only going to deliver us about 200 real world megabytes per second. Obviously, yes, there's variations and overheads and things like that. But my point is we're looking at that types of speeds and hard drives, they don't run very fast. And if we're not really relying on these things to do fast raid, they're actually absolutely awesome, which is Another thing that really, really annoys me because they're great and they suck all at the same time. Big companies like Backblaze actually go ahead and use this as part of their open source design, although not this exact card, but they use these cheap low cost little uh, raid cards to go ahead and add drive connectivity to their servers because these things are cheap. Throw in one of these with four ports or even get one of the uh, eight port versions and boom, you've got a bunch of drives that you can connect to your system that don't cost a lot of money. Go ahead and use a software type RAID to, well, control your RAID because these onboard controllers are in some case hit and miss, but go ahead and grab a different RAID controller and boom, you have a really reliable setup that just didn't cost you an arm and leg. And that is what I really do love about this. Now, in a recent project that I'm putting together, hasn't really come out as a video yet, I'm going ahead and building a 90 terabyte-ish server. I haven't finalized the final number, but it's gonna be in that 90-ish terabyte uh, storage space. And I saved two grand by buying cheapo PCI Express 1X cards to go ahead and connect all the drives because I'm not expecting super high performance in the reads and writes department. I just want to load stuff up as archives. This thing is absolutely awesome. Or I should really say these things when you put them in a system with a bunch of other cards identical to this. And if we take four of these guys, put them in a RAID 0 through Windows Software RAID, which let's face it, isn't the greatest RAID controller, but simple and everyone has access to that. If you run Windows, we can see here, Boom, the performance actually isn't too terrible at all. We go ahead, get okay reads, okay writes, which are better than a standard, well, mechanical hard drive can do just on its own. Again, if we put enough drives into an array, we're gonna cap out at the 250 meg a second theoretical limit. 
but all in all, for cheapo storage, this thing's really great. So that then brings us to the TLDW part of this video, although this video has been kind of quick as it is. But my point being, these little cards both annoy me and get me really excited for multiple connected drives to your system. They annoy me because a lot of people see four or in some cases eight SATA ports and they see RAID 0 and they go, wow, I could do 1.2 gigabytes per second theoretical if my drives can do, you know, about 300 megabytes per second sustained. That's awesome. But in reality, that's not the case thanks to the interfaces that these cards do run. What they're great for is the hard drive world, where you're not really expecting the world's highest performance. You can go ahead and throw four, or again, in some cases, eight hard drives on one of these things, add a ton of storage to a system, run your RAID off of the software controller, whether they'll be Windows RAID, which and it's just don't do that. But anyway, you can theoretically use whatever you want. And it's actually a really awesome little thing. As I mentioned, I've saved about two grand by buying these cheap little cards and just running them as essentially HBA cards, rather than running them with the little RAID controller on board with these particular units. I really like them, but man, these things are absolutely annoying to see online, where they're claiming the sellers are claiming or whether the people buying them are claiming that they're going to get good performance. You're not, and I've seen it time and time again. But guys, let me know down in that comment section, do you have one of these kicking around in your system? Do you use it for expanding storage or adding performance to a hard drive array? Do let me know down below. If you want to pick up one of these and actually build a fairly large storage capacity or even just check out what Backblaze is doing with these, I'll leave it all linked down in the description box. Guys, thanks for watching. Catch you all in the next one.